Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Prabhat Patnaik and we are going to discuss what could be seen in some quarters as a rather dangerous fall in the rupee. Prabhat, various people have commented the rupee slide is not going to be good for the Indian economy. Some people have said the slide is well not 12 to 13 percent, it could be 8 percent. And there are also conflicting remarks about whether it's good or bad for the Indian economy. Some saying it's not so bad, some saying no, it's bad. So broadly, what would be your take on the depreciation of the rupee itself? You see, the problem with any depreciation of such a currency is that you don't know where it's going to stop. Because any such depreciation sets up expectations of a further depreciation, which basically means that you have uh, an outflow taking place. And it can continue. It to can slide. continue, uh, as has happened in many countries. Now, I think there was always a problem about the Indian growth story, namely, it always was accompanied, unlike the Chinese, by a current account deficit, a persistent current account deficit. This was financed for quite some time because of the inflow of uh, finance from, from, from abroad, particularly from, from the US. And that was made possible because on the one hand, the US interest rates were close to zero because they were trying to revive the economy in the wake of 2008, while in India, the interest rates were much higher. Prior to that, it was made possible because the Indian economy had opened up for the first time. There were all kinds of opportunities that international finance saw in an economy hitherto closed opening up. So till now, they had managed. But now there is a sea change in the situation because in the US, interest rates have started going up and the Fed has announced that they're going to go up further. And at the same time, because of the fact that you know, uh, Trump's protectionism has introduced a degree of uncertainty about the future of this whole globalization project. Oddly enough, you are having a flow of finance from all over the world to the dollar. It's remarkable that actually whenever there is any uncertainty, finance flows to the United States because that's its home base. So dollar gets strengthened. Oddly enough, after 2008, when the US economy was in a crisis, actually from all over the world, dollar went to the US. So these two facts arise in the US interest rates and uncertainties about globalization have actually meant that the dollar is strengthening vis-a-vis -vis all currencies and particularly currencies like rupees where actually the current account deficit was persistent are very badly hit because of this. There is no limit to it. There is no reason to believe that at some point a rupee is going to stabilize. I think this notion of an equilibrium exchange rate where it would stop is something which is completely untenable. So that way is very serious because after all, every such thing basically means inflation rises in the country. It means that many of the Indian companies who have borrowed abroad, their balance sheets come under stress because obviously they're kind of, you know, liabilities. Repayment liabilities. Liabilities go up relative to assets. And, cons and, and that creates further expectations of economic difficulties in the country and therefore further tendency to outflow Prabhat, from the currency. Just one point that I, I wanted to make because you were talking about the balance never happens. Also, in terms of export-import, what we export may be flexible, but what we are importing, a large component is oil. Yes, and that's there right. Is no there is, there is no flexibility over there. Yeah, that's right. Unless you want to constrain yeah, the economy yeah, badly yeah. on energy terms. Absolutely. And the second is also the oil prices are also going up. We're going up, yes. And that's not because of the Indian economy. That's, no, that's because true. of the much larger issue. That's so we have a true. double bind yes, on this, absolutely. that balancing in terms of expectations theoretically is a problem. But also in real terms, this time the balancing looks rather difficult. Those who are you that actually this is good for the economy base themselves on the belief that some point that this is good for exports. But you see, exports take a long time to, to I mean, you know, there is, you know, that there's a very long lag. If at all there is any positive effect of the exchange rate on exports, that takes a very long time to manifest itself. And during that, you can have disastrous falls in the value and of the currency. also, if the fall that is taking place is across a set of countries yes. who export similar goods, That's then right. that is also not exactly. happening because Absolutely. you are seeing rebalancing. Yes 
balancing or yes. changing terms of uh, the dollar to other currencies, yes. which are very similar to India's. India might be doing Absolutely. a little bit worse yeah. in that yeah, yeah, sense, yeah, sure. but it is not significantly different for others. I and mean, when you add to it the U.S. protectionism, then of course matters are even worse, you know. You also talked about the fact that uh, what it means for the Indian companies, that the Indian companies could have rising now a crisis of their, on their balance sheets because of the repayment obligations, having borrowed in good times, shall yes, we say. Yes, yes, and exactly. already with the non-performing assets of the banks that we see, this could worsen the crisis of the, of the sector? Absolutely. Indian companies borrowed precisely when interest rates internationally were much lower compared to India. But now the exchange rates are actually negating that particular benefit. In, in fact, it becomes... The interest rate is much more than offset by the depreciation of the the currency. currency. So even for capital, private capital in India, things don't look so good. Absolutely. And therefore also for the financial system. Because after all, they don't only borrow from abroad because the Indian financial system is also involved. If we look at the management of the economy the last four years by Modi government, would we say that the fact that we have had very little uh, industrial growth, very little job growth, manufacturing growth has been very poor. The farmers have not benefited clearly because of the crisis that you see, that this in fact is going to add to this crisis? Yes, you know, uh, or I would say that the current crisis is going to add to that because what's going to happen now, you know, that that the economy of late has not been functioning very well. But at this moment, with inflation now picking up, with balance of payments becoming unsustainable, and with, as you said, in the world economy, oil prices, is beginning to rise because of the agreement within OPEC, uh, India is particularly badly placed. And therefore, on top of all the other problems, unemployment and so on, if you have inflation rising, then this is really going to create great hardships as far as the people are concerned. You see, the government doesn't seem to have any idea of how to tackle it because the measures they have announced are just not enough. There is somewhere an implicit view, perhaps, that at some point this is going to stop itself. But that, as I said, is something which simply is not going to happen. Or let's put it this way, Mr. Jetley's uh, economics, which seems to be doctoring the facts. And uh, <laughs> as I have, I think, said in one of the News Click discussions, he should really get the Fiction Award of the Year <laughs> in the way he's been presenting yes, the facts yes, of the economy. Absolutely. And, and you know, they have now, for instance, unemployment is, is, is something on which whatever data we had, now you, you, you can't rely on any information about what's going They have completely suppressed information about employment. And as far as, uh, in fact, the, 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 the Parliament's Estimate Committee headed by Murli Manohar Joshi itself has come down heavily on the government's release of data and, and the information so they give. So apart from what it has done to the Indian economy, what it has done to the Indian statistical absolutely, organization, absolutely. which was built the by absolutely. Professor Mahalalubis. That is Shabir. something which really is very tragic. It was one of the finest statistical systems anywhere in the world. And what has happened to it in the last few years is really quite disastrous. One feels very sad about it. You know, Prabhat, I, as you know, come from a very different discipline, but statistics is the one which is common between the two. And we have had professors in different places of the world actually talking about that this part of probability calculus is only understood by Indians. And that was really because of Professor Mahalnubis and the Indian Statistical Institutes, the statistical organizations. And sampling, you know, these interpenetrating subsamples on which the NSS was based was a remarkable thing. And such large samples anyway, you know, were had in the world, you know. So it's just quite impressive. It's a a twofold tragedy. One is a tragedy to the economy of not using data in a way that you do the planning. And the other is, of course, that you destroy the database. And it's a tragedy to democracy that people don't get to know the information about the economy. So quick prognosis. The next one, six months are not, doesn't look to be going to be good uh, for the economic point of view, because given the uncertainty with what's happening in West Asia, Saudi Arabia, the Khashoggi, uh, case and the fact that Saudi Arabia is now is in trouble and they've been threatening to let the oil price rise even further. Now, if that happens, we are going to be in 
uh, very much serious crisis. trouble because also additionally the, the 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 harvest may not be very good in which case the inflationary pressures will be even greater than just warranted by the depreciation of the currency any quick thoughts on what the government should be doing well i think firstly it is impossible to sustain the indian balance of payments without some kind of import controls in other words i think if we are going to overcome this current account deficit, there has to be direct control of imports. Last time, when we were in such a crisis in 2013, uh, the government had controlled gold imports. And quite apart from the direct impact of it, it also gave a signal that really uh, the government is doing something and, and, and it actually spec uh, checked the speculative move against the rupee. So I think direct import controls are essential. And likewise, I think it would be good if petrol prices, petrol product prices are brought down but on the other hand, there is some kind of a direct control on, on, on petrol product distribution. I mean, this can take the form, for instance, in many Southeast Asian countries, you have a situation where you have carpools that, you know, you cannot just have one person driving a car and, and using up enormous amounts of energy. Or when we had odd even, that was also a way of, of petrol product rationing. So we have to have direct controls on petrol product use, direct control on, 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 on imports, and direct control on prices. So I think all of which really represents a paradigm quite different from the neoliberal one. Thank you, Prabhat. Of course, this is probably not the direction this government is going to go. So these are the issues that need to be brought back to the agenda of the country. If we are, if we are open to the idea that we are actually entering rather choppy waters on the economic front. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Prabhat, for being with us. And be with us in NewsClick. Do come and visit our website and watch our YouTube videos.